All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third game of our four-game slate here today to de determine the champions in the sport of baseball for the North Coast section. My name is Michael Smith. I'll be joined by my color analyst, Alex Richmond, once again. The producer today is um, Todd Florinoy, and uh, we also have Stephen Davies just kind of kicking back, waiting for his next game. He'll be doing the D1 game. As our game right now that we're focusing on is the Division II bout between the Campolindo Cougars and the Doherty Valley Wildcats, rivals in the Diablo Foothill Athletic League. They will tow it up once again, just as they have done previous times this season. Camp Lindo comes into this one with a record of 22-4-1 overall, and they are looking for their third straight North Coast section title as they take on, like I said, league rival, the Doherty Valley Wildcats, who come into this game with a 21-6 record. These two teams split their two meetings earlier this season, and it was... Doherty Valley's Cody Snyder, or Doherty Valley's Cody Snyder is the one who will get the start against the Cougars today. He has pitched extremely well against Camp Lindo's very potent lineup in the two games that they have played this year. And Doherty Valley had been, you know, flying under the ra radar for their first 14 games this season until game number 15 when they beat Camp Lindo 3 0. That kind of awakened the eyes of all the, you know, Fans paying attention to North Coast section baseball today. This Doherty Valley team can be pretty good. They are the two seed, taking on the number one seed Camp Lindo Cougars. Snyder in 14 innings allowed just two runs, 10 hits, five walks, and struck out eight in that 3 0 win for the Doherty Valley Wildcats. And then Campo got the win on May 10th in the second game they played, winning 2 to 1. And that loss was one of two run, two one-run defeats that the Wildcats had near the end of the regular season. The other one, um, well, it, it came. I'll try to get that for you later on. But the postseason has been a different story for Doherty Valley. They have registered back-to-back one-run wins, including a walk-off 3-2 win against Petaluma in the semis to get here to this game today. Brian Zhu was the one who delivered the big hit, while Snyder was the pitcher. He pitched two shutout innings in relief for the win. He pitched a four-hitter against Clayton Valley in the quarterfinals after the Wildcats blew away Rancho Catati in the first round, 19 to nothing. Snyder, an overall record of 8-2 with a 1.58 ERA. 58 hits, 52 strikeouts, 23 walks. He has anchored the staff for a team that is outscoring their opponents five, almost nearly six runs to three runs, nearly double the average. And so it'll be Campolindo leading things off. They are the road team. It'll be Brett Stevens hanging in at the plate. And he watches a first pitch called strike here. First pitch coming at 4.08 West Coast time here from Oco Coliseum in Oakland, California. Snyder's second pitch to Stevens misses outside for a ball. One and one the count. And I'll turn it over to Alex who will give you the lineup as soon as we get the first out. I'll wait for the first out and then Alex will give you the lineup for Camp Alindo. Like I said, Stevens is leading off right now at the plate and he's very patient. Decides to not swing at a low and outside pitch there to make the count now two balls and one strike. Facing Snyder. And a big swing and a miss there from Brett Stevens. Evens the count up. Two and two. Yeah, blows that one right by Stevens to even the count up. And let's see if he can send him down this next pitch. All right, Cody Snyder against Stevens in a 2-2 count. Top of the first inning. And he blows a fastball right by Snyder, right by Brett Stevens once again for the first out. It happens to be a strikeout swinging here to start things in this Division II title game. And a good way, good start, excuse me, for Snyder getting uh, Brett Stevens, the leadoff center fielder, to go down on strikes. That's a good way to start it. You know, got the nerves going. And uh, as we saw in the first game, that didn't happen, but it's always good for the pitcher to settle in and get things going. James Marvel will be the next batter. He is the designated hitter for Camp Lindo today. And he shows butt and then draws back. Pitch, however, still called a strike. Owen won the count here. I'll finish off the lineup. Since so James Marvel, it'll be Robbie Tanerowitz, who is in the on-deck circle. He'll bat third and start at second base. Austin Ray is the starting catcher. He will bat in the cleanup spot. The 0-1 delivery to James Marvel is roped into left field for a base hit. So James Marvel on an 0-1 offering swings away at a pitch that was right down the middle of the plate. 
and he laces it into left field to get on for a single. Yeah, Marvel did a good job turning on that pitch and just taking it to shallow left field for the first hit of the ball game. As mentioned, Austin Ray is the cleanup hitter as Robbie Tanerowitz now steps to the plate. Josh Cushing will start at shortstop. He'll bat fifth. Dennis Karras is the starting third baseman. He'll bat sixth. Trent Shelton, the starting first baseman, will bat seventh. Cole Ryder out there in right field will bat eighth. And Cody Kiriazzi rounds up the order for Campolindo. He is the starting left fielder batting ninth as Robbie Tanerowitz swings and misses at strike one there. 0-1 the count. Robbie Tanerowitz, a right-handed batter, stretching, waving his bat around the plate, and now is ready to face Snyder. And Robbie Tanerowitz hacks that one foul and out of play. A couple fans giving chase for it in the seats. And now it's nothing into the count to the starting second baseman for the Cougars. Yeah, Snyder throwing well early on here and getting ahead of the hitters. Yeah, Snyder looking pretty impressive here to start this game. A junior on the mound for the Doherty Valley Wildcats. Right-hander. Righty on righty right now. And the 0-2 make that strike three as Robbie Tanerowitz can do nothing but look at such a beautiful pitch on the outside part of the plate. Tanerowitz knew he was gone and jogged right back to the dugout. Out number two, two strikeouts for Snyder, and he has a chance to strike out the side as Austin Ray will come up to the plate. Austin Ray, the starting catcher for the Campolindo Cougars, right-handed batter. Digging in at the plate against Cody Snyder. And first pitch, called a strike, 0-1 the count. The Campolindo Cougars uniforms, reminiscent of the throwback White Sox uniforms that were famous in the 80s. White tops with a nice blue stripe outlined in red going across, and inside the blue stripe it reads Campo. The short version for Campolindo in kind of a Miami Hurricanes looking font. And a pitch that was low and scathed the dirt there will be called a ball. One and one the count now to Austin Ray. But yeah, it reads Campo and then it has that same blue and red stripe on the uh, sleeves there. The numbers on the back are navy blue, but they have that Blue Jays looking type of font where they're kind of like lines to make up the numbers not really like a, a solid number number and the one and one pitch or delivery I should say misses inside two and one now to count to Austin Ray white pants and I can't tell if there's a thin navy stripe down it just looks like plain white pants to me but they have the coal blue batting helmet with the red C and staying alive, hacking that one foul and just below the press box down to the right of us. And it bounced out of those seats and down lower to where the fans really are here at the ballpark. And a fan got a souvenir. So two balls and two strikes. Yeah, nice hack by Ray there, able to stay alive. And we'll see if he can put this one into play on the 2-2 two -two count. Yeah, he'd like to do something with a runner on first, that being James Marvel. Scoreless game so far here in the top of the first inning, facing Cody Snyder, the junior pitcher for Doherty Valley. Taking off for second is Marvel. The throw is not there. And so Marvel will get a stolen base. Marvel with a good jump and able to slide in safely. And it looked like the pitch before that he wanted to go when he started to, but decided otherwise. And well, Austin Ray did a good job of not giving in to swinging at that pitch. It was low. And it helped his teammate get to second base. So now a full count with two outs. Standing over at second is Marvel after the stolen base now. The 3-2 offering low and outside. And so Austin Ray will walk on over to first. And now it will put runners on both first and second for Josh Cushing. Snyder needs to just focus on Cushing here, not worry about the runners too much. Two outs. So just focus on focus on Cushing here and try to get the third out of the inning early on in the ballgame here. Josh Cushing, the starting shortstop for Camp Lindo today. Right-handed batter. Looking to help his team get on the board early here in the top half of the first. 
Thought about going around on that off-speed pitch offered at by Snyder, but Cushing did a good job of laying off. It'll be 1-0, the count to Cushing. Scoreboard operator needs to get on their job. Oh, actually, it, it was ruled a strike. My bad. I need to get on my job. Owen won the count. For a while, they had nothing. That's why I was saying they need to get on their job, and then they put a strike up there and made sense. And now it's nothing and two, quickly, to Josh Cushing. James Marvel, the designated hitter, standing on second. Austin Ray, the catcher, the previous batter, standing at first. Top half of the first, zero to zero between two league rivals. The top two seeds in the Division Two for the North Coast section squaring it off to see who will be the champ when it's all said and done. Snyder comes through with the pitch, and it breaks to the outside. It'll be one and two to count. Don't really have any stats on Campolindo, so we can't tell you what they're batting, what they're, how many home runs they've got. All I know is this. Campolindo has been the top dog since before the season. They've won two straight North Coast Section Division II titles, and they were definitely picked to win number three this year. And they're in prime position as a base hit will fall into center field, and it'll bring in a run. And Campolindo is on the board here, one nothing. Great piece of hitting there by Josh Cushing. Yeah, it really was. He was able to just drive that ball into shallow center field and just out of the reach of the second baseman. Yeah, he flares the blooper right there into shallow center field. Tenerowitz not able to get to that. Marvel scores all the way over from second. An RBI for Josh Cushing. one nothing Cougars. And now De Dennis Karras will step to the plate. Karras, the starting third baseman for Campolindo, right-handed batter, digs in and watches a first pitch called strike. Oh, and won the count. But yeah, like I said, Campolindo was picked to win this division from the beginning of the season. Senior class with James Marvel, John Cushing, and Austin Ray. And bouncing ball over to second base is gloved and fielded cleanly. Second baseman there for Doherty Valley being Tyler Bryson. He throws on over to his first base teammate, Tanner Pinkston, to record out number three. And so Doherty Valley gets out of the top half of the inning. But not before they give up a run. Thanks to Josh Cushing's RBI single into shallow center field. Scores James Marvel from second. one nothing is your score as we head into the bottom of the first. Here live from O.Co. Coliseum in Oakland, California. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFNorthCoast.tv. Click on Buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIFNorthCoast.tv. Also remember to stay tuned for a post-game show here on CIFNorthCoast.tv where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIFNorthCoast.tv. All right, thank you, Alex. And so it'll be Doherty Valley who will now step to the plate. We'll give you their lineups, and then we'll give the defensive alignment for Campolindo. So Doherty Valley's lineup is going to look like this. It'll be Cody Snyder, the pitcher, leading things off. Then it'll be Brian Sue batting second. Tanner Pinkston is the starting first baseman, he'll bat third. I'm sorry, Sue is the starting third baseman, batting second. Pinkston starting first baseman, batting third. Draco Roberts is the starting right fielder. He will bat in the cleanup position in the lineup. Uh, ben Polanski, the starting left fielder, he'll bat fifth. Uh, batting sixth will be Adam Diaz. He is the designated hitter. Batting seventh will be Andrew Ramos. Ramos is the starting shortstop for Doherty Valley. Batting eighth will be... Number seven, that's Connor Fahey. He is the starting catcher for the Wildcats. And batting ninth will be Ty Nielsen, the starting center fielder for the Wildcats. And the defensive alignment looks like this for Campolindo in left field. There we go. It's Cody Kiriazzi. Center, left, center, right is Cody Kiriazzi, Brett Stevens, and Cole Ryder. 
the left side of the infield, third and short. Dennis Karras is at third. Josh Cushing is at shortstop. Over at second and first base for the Cougars, Robbie Tanerowitz at second and Trent Shelton at first. Austin Ray is the catcher, and Matt Ladresh is the pitcher. Matt Ladresh, who cannot wait to take the ball today. He's a sophomore, and he has been very impressive this year. I've heard his name a couple times in the paper. And the first pitch of the ball game into his counterpart, Cody Snyder, misses outside, 1-0 the count. It's rare that you see a pitcher in the leadoff spot for a team. Just about to say that, Michael, yeah. But that is the case for Jordy Valley today as he pops one foul and out of play into the stands. One and one the count. Left-handed batter is Snyder. Snyder, 333 on the year with 33 RBIs in 87 at-bats. Third pitch offered at by Ladresh. Just misses on the outside. That looked good to me. But it'll be a ball. It's two and one the count. Ladresh, the lefty. And Snyder hammers one into left field. Drifting back for it is going to be Cody Kiriazzi, and Kiriazzi makes the catch on the run. Great grab there by Kiriazzi, huh, Alex? It was. It looked like it might might have been over his head at first, but Kiriazzi able to range back slightly to his right and glove that one. Yeah, great catch there by Kiriazzi. One away, and now Brian Sue comes up to the plate. Sue, starting third baseman, right-handed batter. Watches a first pitch called strike. 320 on the year for Sue with 14 ribbies. It was Sue who delivered the big hit against Petaluma in the semifinals. That walk-off 3-2 win as Sue waits on the second pitch offered to him, missing inside. Evens up the count. One ball, one strike. Next pitch from Ladresh, and Sue taps that one foul straight back against the backstop, and so now it's one and two to count. But yes, yeah, Sue had the game winner against Petaluma. And is looking to play a big part for the Wildcats today here at O.Co. Coliseum. Coliseum. Two balls and two strikes as Sue waits on the high and outside pitch. Like I said, a gorgeous day here in Oakland. Didn't look that way at the beginning, but it has no, really it turned out to be a great day for baseball and a great catch made by a fan in the stands. And now he's going to stand up and let the fans acknowledge him for a little bit. Two balls and two strikes to Brian Sue with one out. And Sue... Lines that one foul, and and it, it's in play, but God, I mean, you know, Stephen Davies, and and, uh, and I'm sorry, one more time, I'm going to need uh, my producer's name one more time, Todd, Todd they brought it up in, in the, in the uh, D3 game, and it really is true, I mean, this, this foul territory here is unlike any other ballpark in the major leagues, it just seems to really keep is. going and going like the Energizer Bunny. Three balls and two strikes now as Sue shows plate patience and does not swing it at anything that he thinks is in the zone, and he, he had good eye there. The full count pitch, and the fastball waved at by Sue, swinging a miss, strike three. Yeah, nice pitch there by Ladresh. Looked maybe a little bit high, but Sue, Sue swung at it and couldn't connect on that one. Strikeout for Matt Ladresh. That'll be Ladresh's first strikeout of the ball game. And now he will face Tanner Pinkston, left-handed batter, starting first baseman for Doherty Valley. And Pinkston waits on a low and outside pitch. Want to know the count. Second pitch bounces in the dirt to Pinkston. 2-0 now to count. Pinkston with a 416 average on the year and 19 RBIs, 77 at-bats. This will be 78, number 78 in the at-bat department for Pinkston. And Ladresh gets a strike on the outside part of the plate. Two and one now the count. The Wildcats also in white jerseys. So this game, a little difficult for the eyes as both teams in white jerseys. And I, and I got to tell you, I hate when teams do that. It just grinds my gears. <laughs> Three and one now the count to Tanner Pinkston. Decides to... Way back on that low pitch. The 3-1 offering, and Pinkston cannot lay off that pitch this time. He swings through and misses at the beautiful breaking ball there by Ladresh, and now it's a full count, three balls and two strikes. But, yeah, the Wildcats jerseys, all white. They have a 
Very thin navy pinstripe going down the sides. It reads Wildcats in a cursive navy blue outlined in a light blue. And strike three. Sit down. Another strikeout swinging for Ladresh. That's two strikeouts to end the top half of the third. Three up, three down. Very impressive so far for the sophomore ace for this Campolindo Cougars squad. We're going to go into the second inning with the score. The Cougars won. The Wildcats, zero. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIFNorthCoast.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. All right, thank you, Alex. And uh, we did not get, get a chance to give you the Doherty Valley Wildcats defensive alignment so we will do that now from left to right. Go, take it on, Alex, if you can for me. Left field, Ben Polanski. Center field, Tyler Nielsen. And right field, Draco Roberts. Left side of the infield, third base, Brian Sue. And Andrew Ramos at shortstop. At second base, Tyler Bryson. And first base, Tanner Pinkston. Behind the dish, Connor Fahey. And on the mound for Doherty Valley, Cody Snyder. All right, thank you. And, yes, Cody Snyder is on the mound. He did give up a run in the first inning on two hits. Could have been a lot worse for the kid. But he did show some pretty impressive stuff. A lot of first pitch strikes to those Camp Lindo Cougar batters he faced. And so it will be Trent Shelton to lead things off. The bottom three in the lineup for Campo, Shelton, Ryder, and Kiriazzi will come to the plate. Seven, eight, nine hitters. And Shelton looks at the first pitch called strike. So once again, just continuing with that first pitch strike. And that's so key in the game of baseball to get that first pitch called for strike. And so far, Snyder has done that with pretty much every batter he's faced. And this is a lazy foul ball that hangs up in the air and hits no man's lands in the stands. And so now it's nothing in two to Trent Shelton, the starting first baseman. For the Campolindo Cougars. Snyder getting in a good rhythm here early on, a good groove, getting those early strikes like you just mentioned, Michael. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's very important, very important to get those first pitch strikes. So nothing in two offering, and it uh, gets Connor Fahey to kind of have to bounce around to go get it. Low, bouncing pitch there. One and two to count in the dirt. Snyder gets set, comes with the pitch that's grounded sharply over to second base. Tyler Bryson picks it up and throws it to Tanner Pinkston for out number one here in the top half of the second. 4-3 put out. That's the way they retired Dennis Karras to end things in the first. So two straight ground outs, 4-3 variety. And now Cole Ryder will come to the plate. Cole Ryder, the starting right fielder, right-handed batter for the Cougars. Ryder versus Snyder. Little little rhyming game out there. And Ryder looks at the first pitch called strike. Owen won the count. Snyder looking in to see what kind of pitch... Fahey wants from his teammate. And that's a hard hit ball that will be called fair down the third base line. Ryder digging in for two. He'll have that easily standing up with a double. And he's clapping for his own self there as he had a very hard hit ground ball that just rolled along with the line there and then rolled into foul territory. Yeah, great piece of hitting by Ryder there as he ripped that one, pulled that one down the third base line. And that was... As close as you can get to staying fair there. Yeah. Skips right past the bag and a stand-up double for the right fielder, Cole Ryder, with, a, with one out here in the top of the second inning. And like I said, that was easy. No sliding, no running, really. He, he walked from home to second on that double. If he, made a, if he might have hustled a little bit more, who knows? He probably could have had a triple, but being that the ball was hit into left field, that would have been maybe you know, stretching it out a little bit too much. He, pr he probably would have got thrown out at third, to be honest. But a double. And now we have the head coach for Doherty Valley coming out to argue things. 
That being Brian Freitas, he just wants to make sure that it was a fair ball. He thought that that could have been foul. So now Cody Kirazi is going to step to the plate with a runner on second and only one out in a game in which his team leads one to nothing here early. We're in the top half of the second inning. Kirazi, the starting left fielder. And now he'll take time. Now Snyder's got to worry about, about Ryder here on second. Oh, yeah. And the first pitch to Kirazi misses low and away. Want to know the count? Not too much, though, because we can see, as we saw in the Division Four game, the pitcher can get out of sorts when they when they start worrying about the the base runners. It's here we're here early on in the game, top of the second inning, only one out, so he needs to focus on the left fielder Kirazi here and get this out. Second pitch on the way to Kirazi is registered as a strike by the home plate umpire. One and one the count. Low strike there. Like I said, a gorgeous afternoon here in Oakland, California. June 2nd. Snyder checking back with Ryder over at second base and then issues the pitch over to Kiriazi, which misses outside of the zone to make now a two and one count. Kiriazi outside the box, looking at head coach Max Luckhurst signals over at third base. The 2 1 offering, and it's a bunt attempt there by Cody Kiriazi, which goes foul towards his team's dugout. And so the count even now two balls, two strikes. Camp Lindo Cougars fans were urged on to wear red to kind of separate themselves from the Doherty Valley fans. And there is a lot of red down below us. Cheering on their Cougars. Camp Lindo just has had a phenomenal athletic year overall. Their football team was here playing Marin Catholic in the Division Three championship game. Or Division Two championship game. Steven and I broadcasted that, of course. And the 2-2 pitch is swung at and missed by Kiriazi. Strike three. He will sit down as he goes down swinging. That is the third strikeout so far for Cody Snyder. And now it's back to the top of the order in Brett Stevens. But yeah, Camp Lindo's basketball team surprised everyone and had a pretty good run through the NCS playoffs. And now their baseball team in position to win their third straight North Coast Section Baseball Championship. And Brett Stevens with the whiff there on the first pitch. Oh, and won the count. Stevens, who struck out swinging to lead things off in the first inning. And would hate to strike out again. He wants to be the guy to come through. Bring his teammate in from second base. That being Cole Ryder with two outs. And another swing and a miss for Brett Stevens. Who is a phenomenal football player. He was the quarterback for Camp Lindo. He's headed to UCLA. And Snyder taking a very long look here. He's taking his time. Unlike the pitcher we saw back in the Division Four title game for, uh, for Marin Catholic. Well, remember oh. Marin Catholic, that guy, Josh Redman, he was yeah. quick. He did not waste any time in between pitches. And yeah, he worked very quickly, yeah. Cole Snyder will miss. Or, I'm sorry, Cody Snyder misses there. And so now it's one and two, that pitch high and outside. one nothing the score. And Brett Stevens will live to see another pitch. Yeah, Snyder doing a nice job here after giving up that double to Cole Ryder to get Kiriazi to strike out. And now trying to do the same, do the same to Brett Stevens. 
Brad Stevens, like I said, just a phenomenal athlete. See if he can bring his his buddy over there on second, that being Cole Ryder in from second to home plate. And ooh, a very close call on the outside part of the plate. Home plate umpire saying, I don't know, that one just missed a little bit. It just missed, Michael. Uh, by, by millimeters. Two balls and two strikes now to Brett Stevens. On deck is James Marvel, who singled and scored the team's only run so far in this game. A high foul ball out of play. Two and two now the count remains. The count remains two and two. It's been two and two. Stevens doing a good job staying alive there to live another day. Yeah. As he tries to bring in Cole Ryder from second after Ryder doubled here in the top of the second inning. Right now James Marvel almost down to his knees in a very crouched stance as he's in the on-deck circle. Watching his teammate, and now Brett Stevens will call time. Take some practice swings outside the box. But it is, it is agreed upon us in the booth. We love Campo's jerseys. Best ones of the day, of the day so far, according to Stephen Davies. And another close call that gets the Wildcat fans hooting and hollering. Outside pitch. Called a ball. So now three balls and two strikes. So... Brett Stevens has done a great job of taking this from a 1-2 and two count now to a 3-2 and two count. He, the, he's in the driver's seat. This counts in his favor. And he will once again stay alive with a good crack of the bat going foul. Full count to Brett Stevens. Yeah, great at bat by Stevens so far. A few, few calls that could have gone either way maybe. But... Uh, He's, he's in there, and it's a 3-2 count. Sure. Facing Cody Snyder. And Brett Stevens finally goes down swinging. Snyder finally gets the win in that at-bat, I guess, if you will. He out, he, they were dueling for quite some time, and it's Snyder who strikes out Stevens swinging. The second strikeout swinging for Brett Stevens, and that makes now the fourth strikeout in the game so far for the pitcher, Cody Snyder. His Wildcats will come to the plate here in the bottom half of the second. They trail one to nothing. You're listening to the Division II Championship in the North Coast section for the sport of baseball being broadcast live on CIFNorthCoast.tv. KBCSports.com and the Play on Sports Network showcase great high school games every week. And now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook. Get the latest KBC and play on news on Twitter or catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all the high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports, kbcsports.com and play on sports. All right. Thank you, Alex. It'll be Draco Roberts, Ben Polanski, and Adam Diaz. The three hitters to start things off for Doherty Valley. Maybe more. Reading the Sports Stars Online magazine that came out in May, early May. There's a little article, little, you know, special place called Extra Bases by Blaine Clemens. And he talks about how there's a lot of good outfielders in the North Coast section. And Draco Roberts was named one of those good juniors that he really likes. He also likes Brett Stevens from Camp Lindo. Like I said, Stevens only. Well, they say he's a junior. I think he's a senior. No, he is a junior, but already committed to UCLA. Wow. Pretty impressive. Yeah. So here is Draco Roberts, the starting right fielder, right handed batter. And he stays patient on a pitch outside. Want to know the count? Second pitch coming from Ladresh. And Roberts. Puts a good swing into it, and he will place it perfectly beyond the outstretched reach of the shortstop for Campolindo, that being Josh Cushing. Yeah, Roberts, nice at bat there, just able to drive that ball in between Cushing and and um, Kiria, excuse me, and able to get on first. And so, Draco Roberts gets on board, first hit of the game for Doherty Valley. It's a single into... 
Shallow left center field. And now Ben Polanski will come to the plate. Polanski, starting left fielder. And Polanski looks at the first pitch called strike. Owen won the count. Polanski now looking in at his head coach for some signs. That being Brian Freda standing over there near third base. Low pitch, nearly bounces in the dirt and almost gets away from catcher Austin Ray, but Ray does a good job of blocking it off. No movement being made by Roberts over at first. One and one now the count to Polanski. Fans getting loud now. And Polanski rolls that one foul back behind the backstop there, behind home plate. And so it's one ball and two strikes now to the starting left fielder for Doherty Valley. Polanski, a senior, known for his bat. And we'll see if he can show that bat off to us here. This is the first time I've ever seen him this year. And instead, he's caught looking at strike three. Pitch that he thought was low as he walks back to the dugout. Not pleased. Kind of has his head hanging down. Just has that walk of someone that's not really happy. As he gets called out on strikes. So now one on and one out. And here is Adam Diaz, the designated hitter. And Diaz takes a big cut and misses. Oh, and won the count. Diaz, 348 on the year and 46 at bats. 16 hits and 9 RBIs. And that's why you, guy, that's why you put this guy in your lineup as your designated hitter. And Ladresh was getting ready to pitch, but Adam Diaz was walking away from home plate as Ladresh was in his windup. He said, hey, time out, dog. And now Diaz is back in the box, facing Ladresh. Left-handed pitcher who catches Adam Diaz off guard on that off-speed pitch. Diaz was way out in front of that pitch. Swung and missed early. Nothing in two now to Adam Diaz. Andrew Ramos, the starting shortstop, is on deck. And another beautiful off-speed pitch. That looked to be a changeup, maybe a curveball, breaking right over the outside part of the plate. And Adam Diaz goes down looking. So now two straight strikeouts looking for Matt Ladresh. And they said he was impressive. I've heard all the talk about him, and he is living up to the hype. He has struck out four of the six batters he has faced so far this afternoon. Two swinging, and now two looking. And here is Andrew Ramos. And Ramos watches a first pitch called strike. Ladrash doing a nice job, like you said, getting in on the hitters early. And another pitch called a strike. Makes it now nothing in two to Ramos. Makes it that much easier as a pitcher when you're getting ahead of the hitters early in the count. Well, you're not going to do anything unless you swing that bat. Maybe these guys need to start swinging away here. And Ramos does not swing, but deservedly so. That ball was low and almost bounced in the dirt before it could even get to home plate. One ball and two strikes. James Davies on the camera. Glad to see that guy. Although he's wearing the Puma shirt. I might need to get, him, get on him about that. I might need to buy him a Nike shirt so he can start <laughs> rocking that every time he's in my presence. I don't know if I'm digging the Puma shirt. <laughs> one and two to count. But I'm, I'm glad to have him here. He's, he's one of the best in the business. I told him that numerous times, and I, I stay true to that claim. Him and his brother love working with those guys. The one and two offering to Ramos. And that will miss. Now it's two balls, two strikes. And with the runner on first, Alex, I mean, the Wildcats want to get something going here, but Ladresh has been awfully tough. They definitely do. A few, uh, some good, good patience here from Ramos. Pitch on the way. Swung at and missed. First strikeout, number three. He strikes out the side, does Matt Ladresh, in this bottom half of the second inning. That is now... Six strikeouts out of seven batter, or uh, I'm sorry, five strikeouts out of seven batters faced. It, I, Matt Ladresh looking really strong here through the first two innings. Well, this is where 
I will tell you the score. The score is one nothing as we head into the third. And speaking of heading into the third, we'll head into the third with a new play-by-play -play guy. That'll be Alex Richmond. He's going to take over for play-by-play -play duties for the third, fourth, and fifth innings. So sit back and enjoy. And I'll be doing the best I can to back him up as my color analyst. Like I said, folks, we're going to go into the third inning. Cougars will have their at-bats. They lead one nothing here from O.Co Coliseum in Oakland, California. Need a highlight video for your athlete? Working to earn that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact kbcsports.com. We can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches the link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-677. Three, two, four, six. And thank you, Michael. Yes, I'll be taking over the duties here for the next three innings, and we'll see Cody Snyder get back out on the hill for Doherty Valley, the the kind of do-it-all player leading off and pitching. That's it's a lot to ask, but I think he can uh, more than uh, more than contribute today for for Doherty Valley. And the Cougars will start out here in the top of the third with designated hitter James Marvel at the dish. He had a single in the first and then went on to score off Cushing's RBI single and swing and a miss from Marvel. Counts 0-1. 1 to nothing here early on in the top of the third in the Division II championship game here at the O.Co Coliseum and Snyder. And that's inside to even the count at one and one. James Marvel, who is also a pitcher today, he's a designated hitter, but reading his profile here on, uh, on perfectgame.org, and they really like this kid, James Marvel. They say he's a good athlete with present pitch ability, consistently around 89-91 when he does pitch. And that's swung on by Marvel. And that's going to get through the left side for a base hit. Marvel, two for two on the day. And he gets on for the Cougars here in the top of the third inning with no outs. So, yeah, so even though this website talking about what he can do as a pitcher, so far he has impressed us offensively. Two for two to start this game. Yes, he has, Michael. Now we have Robbie Tenerowitz, the second baseman. Right-handed hitter who struck out in his first at-bat, 0 for 1. Snyder working out of the stretch now as he checks on Marvel and looks in to Connor Fahey to get the sign. And that's chopped foul off the left side, Robbie Tenerowitz. 0 and 1 to Tenerowitz. Yeah, Marvel who had gotten offers from a lot of big-time schools, Stanford, Cal, Northwestern. Notre Dame, Boston College, Harvard, Wake Forest, Washington, UC Irvine, San Diego, Army, Oregon, UC Santa Barbara. Wow. But it was Duke in which he chose to attend. So he will be playing for the University of Duke next year. So the baseball. one Tenerowitz grounds that one through the left side. Almost the same, same hit as Marvel had there. Kind of right. Uh, right through the left side of the infield in between Sue and Ramos. So first and second now. Marvel on first, Tenerowitz on second. Almost a mirror image there, Michael, of, <laughs> of Marvel's base hit. Yeah. And uh, talk about Tenerowitz. He's another guy. He's heading to Cal. I mean, you take a look at this Camp Alindo roster. They have seven different players who have commitments to four-year colleges. That is outstanding. Marvel going to Duke. Josh Cushing and Austin Ray are both heading to Washington. And Ray fouls that one straight back. Counts 0-1. Cole Ryder is supposed to be going to Johns Hopkins. And then those are the seniors. And then you have Trent Shelton, a junior, who's going to be going to Oregon State. Robbie Tenerowitz, a junior, going to Cal. And Brett Stevens, a junior, going to UCLA. Like I said, a very athletic school right now, Camp Lindo. It's an impressive list. Snyder looks in. The right-handed Ray squares around to bunt, and he bunts foul off the left side. 
to bring the count to 0-2 for the Cougars, who have two men on. Marvel singled, and Tanerowitz singled as well. Both through the left side of the infield, almost mere images of each other. And the Cougars have two men on here in the top of the third inning, leading one to nothing. Now Ray, the catcher, steps back in. Who's heading to Washington, like Michael said? Snyder looks in and gets the signal, working out of the stretch here. The 0-2. And Ray's going to go down on strikes. Got rung up there for the first out of the inning. I looked away for a moment. Was that looking or swinging? Looking. Okay. So Josh Cushing, the shortstop, who was one for one with an RBI in the first inning, will come to the plate. Yeah, it's very impressive. Like I said, Josh Cushing and Austin Ray both going to Washington along with fellow league rival Will Ballow out of San Ramon Valley High School. They'll also be joined by another Bay Area native in Braden Bishop from St. Francis to San Carlos. And Cushing takes a ball. Like I said, Cushing, excuse me, a strike. Like I said, Cushing one for one with an RBI single in the first inning. Got the Cougars on the board. First and second now. As Snyder looks in, checks his runners. That one's fouled back by Cushing to bring the count to 0-2. 52 pitches for Snyder, 37 strikes and 15 balls in the early goings here. Cushing, who last year hit 400 for the season with five home runs and 30 RBIs. The pitch from Snyder, and Cushing drives that one to left field. Going back is Polanski, and he's going to make the catch for the second out of the inning. Polanski, battling with the sun a little bit there, was able to glove that one. So still first and second for the Cougars. Marvel on second, and Tanerowitz on first. The future Cal player. And this is what the University of Washington head coach Lindsey Meggs had to say about Josh Cushing. He says, quote, Josh is a very solid player who comes from one of the best high school baseball programs in California. He can play every position on the infield and is a contact hitter who can drive in runs. As Karras fouls that one out of play into the seats and it caroms back onto the field. 0-1-1 to Karras. And then I like this. He finishes it off, Alex, by saying, while we like his versatility, we love his intangibles. Josh makes the big play on defense. He gets the game-winning hit, and he plays harder than you. Josh is a winner. <laughs> End quote. <laughs> Got to like that. Got to like that. And he'll be... He'll, he'll be there. He'll be a, a UW Husky. 0-1-1 to Karras, the third baseman for the Cougars. Looks at that one. That's going to be a ball to bring the count to 1-1. One 1-0 one. One to here. Top of the third inning from the O.Co. Coliseum in this Division II NCS title game. Campo looking for their third straight Division II title. Snyder working out of the stretch with Marvel and Tenerowitz on the base. And Karras fouls that one down the left field line. Marvel at second, Tenerowitz at first. Count stays at one and two with two outs here in the top of the third inning. Yeah, Dennis Karras, a freshman, or I'm sorry, a sophomore, who has really been a huge contributor as an underclassman for this Camp Lindo Cougars team. Karras 0 for 1 in the first inning with a ground out to second. The pitch from Snyder. That's wide, and both runners are going, and they're going to be safe. Marvel into third, and Tenerowitz into second. Good base running from the Cougars as they, as both Marvel and Tenerowitz get into scoring position. 
And two and two the count with two outs here. As Snyder looks into his catcher, Fahey. And Karras goes down looking. Gets rung up and that's going to do it for the top of the third inning. And Cody Snyder able to get out of that, I guess you'd call it maybe a mini jam there as Marvel and Tenerowitz had moved over, had stolen and moved over to third and second respectively. So we'll take a quick quick break here. This is the NCS Division II championship game between Campolindo and Doherty Valley. Campo in the lead, one to nothing. We're in the middle of the third. Might seem like it's a bit premature to talk about the 2012-2013 school year. But in a little over two months, we'll be back on CIFNorthCoast.tv with some football from around the section. Starting late August, we get back to our coverage starting on the gridiron with multiple games weekly. Join us this fall as we kick off this football season right here on CIFNorthCoast.tv, your home for North Coast section sports. All right. Thank you. Dennis Karras, like I said, he has been a, a big-time factor on this team. Only a sophomore. Go through some of his favorites. His favorite Major League Baseball team? The of course, the Giants. The Giants, Of yep. course, the Giants. Favorite baseball player, Dustin Pedroia. California kid. California kid from Woodland. I actually used to work with a girl that lived right down the street from him. We, uh, we, had a, we, we were the official voices of books on tape. Okay. For, cool. you know, for textbooks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when I was at Sac State, it was a very cool job for the Department of Education. And uh, so she was thrilled. Well, I remember when Dustin Pedroia got rookie of the year. I mean, she made everyone at the office get on the computer at least twice a day and vote for him <laughs> for rookie of the year, you know. And then, of course, he has to do something other. I mean, he has to like things other than baseball. He can't just spend all his time playing baseball. And so... He says he likes to water ski and, of course, watch professional sports. If he's not playing, he might as well watch them. The catcher, Connor Fahey, is going to lead off the inning for Doherty Valley, and he takes a ball from the pitcher for Campo, Matt Ladresh. And we've seen Ladresh so far. I have five, send five guys packing here five strikeouts in the early going yeah, one he, hit for Doherty Valley he has been awfully impressive against the first seven he's faced Fahey skies that one to right field Ryder underneath it battling the sun and makes the catch for the first out of the inning and you know what I'm gonna give Ryder some props because you know that may look like a routine fly ball but sometimes it's tough when the sun's beating down on you he really had a battle with the sun on that one and he made the catch Good catch there by Snyder. I mean, by Ryder. <laughs> Ty Snyder and Ryder combination. Cole Ryder with a great, great catch out there in right field for Campo. Ty Nielsen now comes to the plate. Takes a strike looking to make it 0-1. One, one out here in the bottom of the third inning. One to nothing. Campo in the lead. Ty Nielsen, not the best average. It's below 100. But they really like him defensively. He only has three hits on the season, five runs and two runs driven in. That one inside. Nielsen had to pick up his leg a bit to avoid getting hit by that, and the count goes to two and one. Nielsen, like I said, it's, it's the things he does beyond hitting. Nielsen drives that one to left center, coming over from center field, Stevens, and he's able to make the catch for the second out of the inning. And the sun looks like it's a factor right now, Michael. Every fly ball we've seen so far, Kar Karazi, Stevens, and Ryder have all been putting their gloves up to shade the sun. Yeah, I mean, this is the time of day. What We're at 4.59 now. This is where the sun really starts to become a factor. Um, you know, it's, I mean, it's beating down on you. And, you know, it's tough for these players to, to have to track the balls. Now Snyder's going to come to the plate. 1-0 and to Snyder. 0 for 1 on the day. And a swing and a miss from Snyder to even the count at 1-1 one and one with two outs here in the bottom of the third inning. 
Yeah, Snyder came into this game batting 333 with uh, 29 hits, 23 runs driven in, 10 of those hits being doubles. Snyder takes a ball for to make the count 2 and 1. The pitch from Ladresh off speed and that misses. Count runs to 3 and 1. Snyder who leads the team in stolen bases with 6. He'd love to get on the base and pick up number 7 if he could. The pitch from Ladresh and Snyder with a swing and a miss. Runs the count full with two outs here. Matt Ladresh looking for his sixth strikeout of the game. Cody Snyder just trying to help his own cause right now. And Snyder stays alive. That one dribbles back behind home plate. Count three and two, two outs. Doherty Valley with one hit so far in this contest. And that was Roberts. And that's grounded to first base and unassisted. Trent Shelton for Campo with the put out on Snyder as he dribbled that one down the first base line. At the end of three, still one nothing here from the O.Co. Coliseum in this 2012 NCS Le Schwab Tires Baseball Championship on North CIF NorthCoast.tv. All right, folks. Well, it's time for some announcements, and I got them for you. Do you want to have your game broadcast live on the Internet and be able to watch it again and again and again and again on demand while making money for your sports program? Do you want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events. Now you got to get these kids started early. You think I just naturally jumped into the booth? No, I was doing this. I was announcing my cousin's baseball games when I was a sophomore in high school, folks. you got to get these kids started early if they want to have the best career in the world, which is being a sports broadcaster, okay? So if you want all that, contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000. Yes, $10,000 for your sports program. Again, that's info, the short abbreviated term for information. 10000 Stephen. At kbcsports.com. St Stephen, just in case you didn't hear, that's 10000 bud. Or you could call us at area code 619-677-3243. Six. But yeah, this is the greatest greatest career in the world. And I know that there's other kids that have the passion. And if and and, and you gotta get them going. Shelton with a swing and a miss to lead off the top of the fourth inning here. One to nothing the score. Cougars in front looking for their third straight division two title. Yeah, Shelton who was 0 for one in this game with a ground out to second. I believe in the second inning. The pitch from Snyder. And another swing and a miss from Shelton. 0-2 oh the count now. Oh and 2 the count. Snyder looks in. Outside pitch taken by Shelton to bring the count to 1-2. The 1-2 pitch. That was close. But inside. A little too, little too far inside for the umpire's liking. Brings the count to 2-2. Two and two Here in the top of the fourth. And that one fouled back. Shelton stays alive. 2-2 two two the count. Snyder with 63 total pitches. 44 strikes and 19 balls. And the 2-2 from Snyder as he looks in. High to Shelton. Runs the count full. 3-2 and two the count now. Trent Shelton, who's starting at first base today, he's also a pretty good pitcher, a left-handed pitcher. Like I said, committed to Oregon State. This year he was all-league, the DFAL's most valuable pitcher. Last year he also made all-league for pitching. And that one slapped down the left field line and foul. Shelton stays alive, stays alive. 
Shelton doing a nice job to stay alive there, just doing anything he can to foul that one off, and he does. Shelton, who is... Shelton drives that one to left center field. And wow, Ben Polanski. I thought that was going to go right past him, but he ranged back to his left and able to make that grab. That's what you call the shoestring catch there by Polanski. Nice catch by Polanski. As he had to reach that glove down low to get it. Fly ball out to left field. Yeah, it looked like that was... That might drop at first, yeah. but... Polanski able to track it down and make that shoestring catch. Ryder now fouls that one. Back behind the dish, 0-1 the count. One to nothing, Campo in the lead here. Top of the fourth inning. Snyder looks in to get the sign. Ryder steps out. Infield, playing at a normal depth. Outfield straight away. And Ryder, it appears Ryder got hit by the pitch there. And Ben Freitas is going to come out and argue that it didn't hit him. But Cole Ryder takes, takes first base. Now the umpires are going to have a little meeting here. So they ruin it to hit by pitch. It looks like it's going to stay that way. No, they're going to bring him back. Excuse me. Okay. So I guess, Michael, the third base umpire saw something that the home plate umpire did not. And Ryder's going to come back. It's going to be – he's going to return back from first base, and it should be – one and oh? Yeah. Oh and two now. Oh and two. Oh and, and two. That would have been. I would say one and two. Because it was oh and one, and then he got yeah. plunked, or yeah. they thought he got plunked, but I guess maybe he fouled around. That's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. A little confusing, but we sorted it out here. Oh and two, the count to the right fielder, Cole Ryder, who doubled in the second inning. Another that, foul out of play. Yeah. And you talk, you know, we talk about. All these kids that have signed on to play at big time schools, Division One programs, and you know, head coach Max Luckhurst is the first to say that it's not just their athletic ability for why they're getting these offers. I'll continue on that in a moment. Ryder takes a ball, but he said this quote in an article in the La Marinda Patch last year in November. He said, "It's all hard work. What these players have put into this is incredible. Where they went to school." It was school It was school first, not baseball first. Their grades gave them an opportunity to play at the next level. Ryder takes a ball, and before that pitch, he was asking for time. Time was not granted, so he had to stay in the box there. Took a ball from Snyder, two and two the count with one out. Ryder pops that one up to right field. Roberts coming in, but it's going to be Pinkston. Makes the catch in foul territory for the out. Bryson, Pinkston, and Roberts all converging there, but it was Pinkston who made that catch in foul territory for the second out of the inning. I mean, we're talking about an athletic program in the Camp Lindo Cougars who last year, for the year 2010-2011, they took home the Cal High Sports School Sports School of the Year Award. Cody Karazi drives that one to center field, and Nielsen is there and makes a diving catch. Great play by Nielsen. It looks like he's hurt. He might have jammed his wrist oh, there. Oh, no. Hopefully he's okay. As he was coming in to make that catch, and he's up now. Great play by Nielsen. Looked like that one might drop when Kiriazzi drove that out to left center field, but Ty Nielsen, the center fielder, able to come in and range to his right, dive, and make a catch. Great catch to end the inning. We're at the middle of the fourth here, 2012 NCS Le Schwab Tires Baseball Championships. And you're watching it on CIF TV. All right. KBCSports.com and the Play On Sports Network showcase great high school games every week. And now you can access our content using multiple platforms. 
That's right, folks. You can follow us on Facebook. You can get the latest KBC and Play on News on Twitter, which, by the way, I'm on Twitter now. Follow me at MikeOnTheMike24. Let me know how I'm doing in this broadcast, folks. Or you can catch our highlights in high definition on YouTube. That's right. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all this high school action you see every week. Brought to you by your home for high school sports, kbcsports.com, and play on sports. But Campolindo, like I said, they have been very impressive in the athletic ranks. I mean... Even Marvel, James Marvel, had this to say about their program. Quote, it is very cool to see the tradition we have established athletically. Last year we were D3 Athletic School of the Year. You can see all the athletes and sports programs coming together. It's great to be around and surround yourself with such high standards. End quote. I mean, the list goes on of, you know, people that have just captured the front page of the Contra Costa Times throughout the season this year. I kept hearing about Kerry Verdon, who was one of the most dominant runners for cross country and track. And I mean, she led the team to a state championship where they finished a full 21 seconds ahead of the competition. She placed first in the race by nearly two minutes, wow. which in cross country, that's pretty impressive to have that big of a, a, a win. Brian Sue now the third baseman at the plate. 0 for 1 on the day with a strikeout. In the first inning. Sue batting 320 on the year. And he takes a ball, 1-0. The pitch from Ladresh in there, called strike. Brings the count to 1-1. One 24 hits, 14 RBIs. Two of his 24 hits have been doubles. Called strike two to Sue. Counts 1-2 and two now. And Matt Ladresh continues to deal early on here in the championship game. Ball outside to Sue. Evens the count at two and two. The two two pitch. Sue grounds that one to Cushing. Cushing there. A high throw. Shelton's not able to get down, and Sue's going to be safe at first. So an infield single for Brian Sue. As Cushing's throw was a little bit too high, and Shelton wasn't able to get back down on the bag in time and you got to think that they're going to rule that in E6 against the shortstop for Camp Lindo that being Josh Cushing he had the time and the throw was a bit high but even if that was a very close bang bang call because it looked to me that the first baseman Trent Shelton put his foot down on the base before Sue could get there, but it was a very close call. Bang, bang. It was ruled an error, Michael. And they You're did right. rule it an error against Cushing. So not an infield single as Sue reaches on an error by the shortstop, Josh Cushing. So let's see if uh, Doherty Valley can, can get something going here with no outs. Really haven't had an opportunity like this yet, Michael. Yeah, they, I mean, they've, uh, they've only had one runner on. That was Draco Roberts in the second. The only hit of the game for Campolindo. And then there was three straight strikeouts after that. So maybe this could be the start of something. They've definitely got some great pitching so far from Snyder, and now they just need to build upon that. Pinkston now at the plate. He takes high for ball one. Tanner Pinkston, the first baseman. Ladresh now working out of the stretch. Checking on Sue. The 1 0 pitch. Low for ball two. 2 0 now to Tanner Pinkston, who was 0 for 1 in the first with a strikeout for Doherty Valley. Tanner Pinkston, also a football player at Doherty Valley this season. Pinkston takes another ball. 3 0 the count now. And just a week ago against Clayton Valley in that 2-1 quarterfinal matchup, Pinkston hit his first ever home run. First ever in his entire career. Little leagues, everything. That's a four-pitch walk to Pinkston. Sue over to second. First and second now with no outs. And Coach Luckhurst is going to come out and 
have a little chat with Matt Ladresh. Yeah, Pinkston, who's going to be heading to Cal State Fullerton to play baseball in the fall, blasted the first pitch he saw from Clayton Valley starter Tommy Boyle. It was a pitch that was off the plate and outside, but Pinkston chased it and hit it way deep off the scoreboard in center field at Clayton Valley. And this is what he said about the big, the big fly. He said, quote, Coach Freitas gave me the go-ahead to swing because we had Cody Snyder on first base and he was stealing. It was right there. I swung and I hit it perfect, end quote. Now you could say that. <laughs> And so maybe that's a sign. They ended up winning that game with Snyder on the mound. Snyder on the mound here. And the uh, O.Co. Coliseum workers who do the scoreboard, they are urging the fans to get loud. And why not? This is a moment for Doherty Valley where they could change this game. They're down one nothing, Alex. And uh, with nobody out and two on, they have a chance to really not only tie this game but take the lead and possibly change the whole momentum. Yeah, as Ladresh bluffs, Draco Roberts has a chance to Get Doherty Valley on the board here with Sue on second, Pin Pinkston on first. He's responsible for the only hit so far for Doherty Valley. Ladresh, and that's outside, 1-0 and oh, to Draco Roberts. Pick up that nice line drive single to lead things off in the second. And now, with runners on, if he could do that again, a run might come in. And Roberts drives that one to center field. Stevens... Going back under it and makes the catch for the first out of the inning. And that was a big out for Ladresh. As now you might think, Michael, that the, the infield might play double play depth here. Maybe Ben Polanski coming to the plate. 0 for 1 with the strikeout looking. We'll see. We'll see how the defense wants to line up here. Either way, they're going to have to play protective style baseball because... This is a situation where Doherty Valley has a chance to come up big. Takes a little bit of the pressure off Ladresh as he's working out of the stretch with Sue on second and Pinkston on first. Polanski at the plate. Polanski on the ground to second. And Tenerowitz can't get that over to Cushing. So Doherty Valley scores and Sue's going to come in to score. Looked like oh a routine no. grounder. That Polanski had hit to Tenerowitz. Tenerowitz throw offline to Cushing. And so with that error, Doherty Valley ties the game and an error on Robbie Tenerowitz. E4 as Tenerowitz was trying to set up the double play. He had to get down to his, to his butt to go grab that ball. A hard hit ground ball. He was about to make or start what could have been a, a web gem. But... He got down, he tried to make the throw from the ground, the flip to start the double play over at second, and that ball got away from not only the second baseman, but it rolled all the way out from the from the fair play territory out in the left side of the field all the way over into foul territory, and that's what allowed Sue to race into home plate all the way from second and Pinkston to get to third. And Polanski at second. Diaz now takes a strike. Adam Diaz. The DH for Doherty Valley. So a new ball game as we are tied at one apiece. Pinkston on third and Roberts on second for Doherty Valley. The pitch outside to Diaz. One and one the count with one out. And yet we do have a new ball game here. They were able to uh, get those men on early on with no outs. Really helped them here, Michael, to get, the, to get a run on the board. The 1-1. One, one to Diaz from Ladresh. Diaz swings and misses and that ball must have been fouled back there. The runners did not advance so I'm assuming Diaz got a piece of that as it went back to the screen. Diaz who was also a member of the football team for Doherty Valley this season. He was a running back and linebacker. And he is rung up on strikes. He will take a seat after looking at strike three, breaking ball on the outside part of the plate for the second out.
Andrew Ramos now, number four, coming to the plate. Pinkston on third. Draco Roberts on second. Two outs here. Bottom of the fourth. And Ramos grounds that one right back to the pitcher, Matt Ladresh, who puts it away to end the inning. Ladresh able to get out of that jam, but not before Doherty Valley can tie the game at one. So it's one to one here at the O.Co. Coliseum in the D2 championship game. We're between innings here when we come back. We'll have the top of the fifth for you. We're going to take a quick break. This is the NCS Division II Championship game on CIFNorthCoast.tv. All right. And, folks, I got to play this bit for you. This is head coach Max Luckhurst on Bay Preps this week when talking about getting a win against a, uh, a very good freshman pitcher in the playoffs. I'm getting to it here. This is good stuff, folks. I tell you, this is, you can't miss radio uh, interviewing here against uh, the, the pitcher he faced from College Park. Uh, outstanding freshman pitcher? He just got asked about an outstanding yeah, freshman pitch, pitcher yeah. that he faced. Why was he outstanding? I guess, I guess not according to you. What, what, why? I'm not saying he's not outstanding. I'm just asking you what your criteria is for getting somebody outstanding. I don't, what's, what were you guys able to do effectively against him? I, I, I was curious to know why he's outstanding. I was asking what your criteria is for what, what marks somebody outstanding. Um, well, he's won a, quite a bit of games. He's put an ERA up below one, and uh, he's uh, you know been very good for him throughout the course of the season. Who is he, 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 he pitched against? <laughs> who is he pitched against? I love that that line at the end. I guess he didn't like the word outstanding being used there. <laughs> no, he did not. Stevens at the plate now, 0 for 2, bunted the first pitch. Foul, 0 and 1 now. 1 to 1 the score. And like I said, that was uh, Joe Demers was the name of the pitcher that they were talking about. Stevens takes a ball inside. 1 to 0 the count. Demers, who is 6'1", 220. Throws in the high 80s. And Snyder, another ball. Two and one the count to Brett Stevens, the leadoff hitter playing center field for the Cougars. Stevens skies that one to right field. Going back is Roberts, and that's going to get down. And Karam's off the wall, and Stevens is going for three, and he's going to be in there with a stand-up triple. Wow, Stevens crushed that ball to right field. Over the head of Draco Roberts as he was ranging, ranging back. Hit the warning track, caromed off the wall, and a stand-up triple. And that's been the closest hit we've seen all day to a home run. I've been telling everybody this week, I'm so excited to watch a game here at the Coliseum because, you know, football's played standard football field size, but these kids aren't used to playing in a professional park with these kind of dimensions, and I just wanted to see someone, I want to see someone crush one out. I don't know if it's going to be in this game or if it's going to be in the D1 game with De La Salle tonight, but he, Brett Stevens came awfully close to getting a home run there in right field. What a what a hit there. Triple. That ball was crushed. Marvel now at the plate. Marvel takes a strike. 0-1. And, and Michael, that may have been a ground rule double if those those scoreboards out there that aren't on right now we're not there. That could have easily gone over the fence. So lucky for Stevens, he was able to get a triple on that. Yeah, and that's ripped to left field. Marvel with the base hit, and Stevens comes in to score. Have yourself a day, kid. Three for three with three singles. With a the, run scored an RBI. With the latter being an RBI single to give his team back the lead. Two to one. Two to one now, like Michael said, here in the top of the fifth inning. Marvel on first. And Connor Fahey 
is going to come out and have a chat with Snyder, along with Brian Fritas. Talk about what they have to, what Snyder has to do in this at bat against Tanerowitz, who's one for two with a single in the third inning, struck out in his first at bat. Tanerowitz, the second baseman, who made that error in the last inning that allowed Doherty Valley to get on the board. So as Tanerowitz adjusts his gloves, he steps into the box. And Snyder working out of the stretch now with Marvel on first. The man they call Marv. And Tanerowitz takes a ball inside. 1-0 the count. The 1-0, and a big swing and a miss. Looked like Tanerowitz wanted to, was swinging for the fences on that one. One and one the count now to Tanerowitz. Here in the top of the fifth inning, two to one. As Marvel's RBI single scored Stevens after he had hit a triple to deep right field. Ball two to Tanerowitz, two and one the count now. Tanerowitz, 6'1", 185 pounds. Bats with his right, throws with his right. An athletic build with a baby face. <laughs> and they say he has very soft hands defensively. We saw that. His throw, throwing, however, wasn't the best when that error created a run. Ball to Tanerowitz. Brings the count to 3-1. and one. But they like that he has that quick release from multiple angles. And he tends to throw with his foot and hips closed. They say he has more raw arm strength than it shows. Marvel getting his lead at first. The pitch. And that's ripped to left field. Tanerowitz with a base hit. And Marvel is going to stay at second. Looked like for a moment he was going to test the arm of Ben Polanski. But decides to stay at second. So we have first and second now with no outs. And Austin Ray, the catcher for the Cougars, coming to the plate. Tanera, it's now one for two, and like I said, Ray is going to come to the plate. He's 0 for 1 with a walk in the first and a strikeout. And now another conference at the mound, and that looks like it's going to do it for Cody Snyder. As yeah. he's going to move to third base. And Well, Cody Snyder pitched well for the time, for, for the time that he did. At least through the first four innings, he kept it pretty good in a one-run game. 84 pitches overall for the youngster. 57 of those pitches strikes, 27 of them for balls. But uh, you can start to tell that the wheels are coming off the train for young Cody. Is he's given up three straight hits. A triple that nearly left the yard to lead things off in the top half of this inning. As we're still in the top half of the fifth. And then two singles, one of which was an RBI single that drove in Stevens from third. And has since given Campo Lindo back the lead 2-1. to one. And this coming right after the half inning in which his teammates helped him tie this game up. They, they went to bat for him. And it's just, he's reached his wear. It happens. He has. And he's going to move over to third base. As he's one of the leadoff batter. You can't take the leadoff batter out That's the lineup. I was about to say, Michael. Yeah, a great offensive player for Doherty Valley. So he's going to move to third. Brian Sue's going to move over to second base. And as soon as we get a number on this on this pitcher, we'll let you know who that is. Number 25, it looks like. Ian Clark is now coming into the game for Doherty Valley. And Clark on the season, a 1.99 ERA in 67 innings pitched. He's got 27 walks and 55 strikeouts. That's a, good, that's a good ratio right there. Good ratio indeed, Michael. 194 batting average against. He's thrown just over 1,000 pitches this year. 1,013 to be exact. 
Like you said, opponents only batting 194 off him. His ERA is shade below two at 199. He has allowed 23 runs, 19 of them earned on 48 hits. And only one of those 48 hits has been for extras, as it was a double. Clark with the best record overall on this team, 8-1. and one. This will be his 15th appearance of the season. Impressive. So we'll see if he can uh, kind of stop the bleeding, limit the, limit the damage here, the scoring, as the Cougars have. The only thing about him is that he allows runners to steal pretty consistently on him. Batter, uh, runners have stolen nine times on him, and he's only picked them off four times. So Marvel on second, Tenerowitz on first, and the catcher, Austin Ray, to the plate as he squares around. Pinkston charging that down the third baseline, and Clark is able to come off the mound and throw out Austin Ray. And Pinkston was charging on that, but Ray bunted it down the third baseline. Nice play from, from the pitcher, Ian Clark. And so now runners move to second and third respectively on that fielder's choice ground out. Marvel at third and Tenerowitz at second. And that's only the first out here in this top half of the fifth. Camp Lindo's threatening to score some more. They've already scored in one to take the lead back. They're looking, they're hungry for more. Cushing at the plate, one for two, and he fouls that one back. He might have just swung through. I thought he got a little piece of that, but... Looks like he swung through for strike one. one and two. He's one for two with a single in the first, a fly out in the third. Clark gets the signal. And Cushing hits that one right to Ramos, who goes home with it. And they've got Marvel in a pickle, and he's going to be safe at third. So everyone's safe. Bases, yeah, everybody's safe. Bases are loaded now. Cushing able to get on as, as Ramos went home with that. I guess they're going to rule that an infield single a hit for Cushing. Now Dennis Karras, the third baseman, the freshman, comes to the plate. Bases loaded here in the top half of the fifth. Karras 0 for 2 with a ground out in the first and a strikeout in the third. Karras rips that one to left field and that's going to get down. Bounces up. Karam's off the wall. And looks like Karras is going to dig for three and he is. Two runs are scoring. Karras gunned out at third. But he'll take getting gunned out after a bases clearing hit. But not before. Just like Michael said, he clears all the bases and that was a shot. From the freshman, Karras, who ripped that one to left field, hit the warning track, and caromed off the wall. Four to one now, the score. Five to one, thank you, as they just change it up there on the board. Five to one with the bases clearing, bases loaded. And he cleared them. He did. And once Marvel, Tenerowitz, and Ray. One swing of the bat got that one done. As impressive at bat. Yeah, no, that Karras. was that was a, a really impressive at bat. A double there for Karras. And then was thrown out in an attempt to try to stretch it into three. That one fouled out of play. Trent Shelton, the batter. 0 for 2, ground out in the second, fly out in the fourth. And Clark comes in and he did come in with runners on, but he wasn't able to limit the damages. Campo gets three runs here to make it five to one. And that's a ball from Clark. Two and one the count now to the first baseman, Trent Shelton. Shelton takes high, three and one.
the pitch from Clark. And Shelton's going to walk. Gets a free pass. Two outs here. Top of the fifth inning where Campo has scored four runs. With that bases clearing triple by Dennis Karras, who was eventually thrown out, of, out third trying to stretch a triple. But not before three Cougars could score. And Ryder takes a strike, 0 and 1. Ryder, 1 for 2, with a double in the second, and popped out into foul territory in the fourth inning. Talked about Trent Shelton earlier about how he also can pitch. Junior pitcher gave up one hit, had a one hitter in a mercy rule game, a 10 0 win over Pinole Valley in the D2 playoffs. And a swing and a miss from Cole Ryder. 0-2 with two outs. A one-hitter, very impressive. And now here's Ryder. Clark working out of the stretch. With Shelton on first and checks over with Shelton. Shelton gets his lead at first. And Clark. That's another ball from Clark. To Cole Ryder. Two outs. Top of the fifth inning. And that one's chopped to the second baseman, Sue, who gets it over to Pinkston to end the inning. But not before the Cougars can put four on the board and an RBI double for Dennis Karras. As three runs score, he was as he tried to stretch it to a thri triple, was thrown out. Five to one now. Cougars in the lead here at the O.Co. Coliseum. This is the NCS Division II Baseball Championships on CIFNorthCoast.tv. All right. Thank you, Alex. Folks, if... Uh, if you need a highlight video for your athlete, if they're working to earn that four-year scholarship, you want to contact kbcsports.com because we can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give your athlete their own recruiting page right on our website. No more mailing DVDs to colleges. I'm telling you, that is so old school. It's beyond old school. It's like 1920s Tamil Pius old school before the <laughs> <laughs> before there was even record of North Coast section championships. Instead, email coaches a link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at area code 619-677-3246. And also stay tuned for the CIF North Coast TV postgame show where we, Alex and I, will come together and we'll yes, we select will. our player of the game as well as wrap up all the action from this ball game. That's coming up following the game on CIFNorthCoast.tv. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bottom of the fifth. About to begin here. And, folks, I just want to apologize. If I've had a scratchy voice through the first two broadcasts, I really do want to apologize. It's just, you know, when you're mic on the mic, you're on-field MC <laughs> extraordinaire. Sometimes your voice might go out on you, you know. And I had a big game last night. Last game at a homestand on a Friday night. Kids running the bases, that'll wear your voice out, man. Fahey takes a ball, 0 for 1 with a fly out in the third inning. And Ladresh, 65 pitches on the day, 37 strikes and 28 balls. Fahey steps out. And 65 pitches where we're at in this game through four innings is actually pretty good. And a strike from Ladresh. I, I got to give it to Ladresh right now. It He's is. doing pretty well. Pitch count is good. 66 now thrown. 38 of them strikes. 28 of them balls. Counts even at 1-1. One and one. That's inside 2-1 and one to the catcher, Connor Fahey, who's hitting 250 on the year with 9 RBIs and 60 at-bats. The pitch from Ladresh. Another ball to Fahey. Brings the count to 3-1. and one. Fahey 
Fahey rips that one through the left side for a base hit. And Connor Fahey gets himself aboard to lead off this bottom of the fifth inning. And only the second hit given up by Matt Ladresh. Yeah, Matt Ladresh has been spectacular so far in this game. Only allowed one run and has really set the tone for his Cougars. And of course, that top half, the top half of this inning has really set the tone for the Cougars. But um, but it's been beyond the strong pitching of their sophomore ace, Tyler Ladresh. That's I think that's the even more impressive thing. He's only a sophomore. Just imagine how good this kid Matt Ladresh can be as a junior and as a senior. Yeah, good point, Michael. Yeah, I mean, only a sophomore pitching in a game of this magnitude and pitching this well. Right. Only good things to come in the future for Matt Ladresh. And we have a pinch hitter here, as it is not going to be Ty Nielsen. He has been taken out of this ball game. The new batter is going to be Denevi for Doherty Valley, that being Trevor Denevi, a senior. Denevi steps in, takes a ball outside, 1 0. Fahey on first with that single through the left side in between Karras and Cushing. Ladresh looks in, 1 0 the count. Denevi takes ball two, 2 0. Five to one here in this D2 championship game from the O.co Coliseum. Ladresh to the plate, and that's a strike. Two and one now. The count. Ladresh working out of the stretch. Fahey getting his lead over there at first. He's checked on by Ladresh. Strike two now. Two and two the count. To the pinch hitter. Denevi. Denevi, who will be celebrating a birthday this month. June 13th is his birthday, so happy future birthday, Trev. He'll be turning 18. Ladresh checks on the runner. Denevi, slow roller to third to Karas, and he gets the out at second. They cannot, we'll however, complete the double we'll play. Explain that in a second, yeah. Yes. Cushing. Got the out at second. Threw on to first to Shelton. That one got by, and so Denevi advances to second on that wild throw. Yeah, so that'll definitely be a throwing error charge to the Camp Lindo shortstop, Josh Cushing. As, well, actually, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Cushing. It was yeah, it was Tanerowitz. So Tanerowitz now with two throwing errors in this game, and Man, poor kid, you know, I mean, just, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you got to try to double him up there, but that was going to be a bang-bang play. I, I would have just not even tried to rush it. I mean, now you've put what could have been just a runner on first, a runner at second, and believe me, that 90 feet changes. It changes does. the game a lot. Snyder, is that one thrown, is thrown almost behind him, takes ball one. Denevi now on second base. Snyder 0 for 2 in this game. Flew out to left field in his first at bat and grounded out unassisted to the first baseman. That Ladresh being Shelton. With a strike. Called strike. 1 and 1 the count to Cody Snyder, who started off the game pitching and then moved to third base after he was relieved by Ian Clark. Ladresh. Snyder makes contact with that to the second baseman, Tanerowitz. And Tanerowitz on to first for the out. And Denevi advances on that fielder's choice. Brian Sue now the batter who moved from third base to second. And he takes a strike, 0-1. Struck out in the first and reached on an air in the fourth. He's 0 for 2. Denevi over at third. Ball two 
from Ladresh. Two and one the count with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Sue takes another ball, three and one. Sue, who will be busy this year over summer playing for the Tri-Valley Bay Bruce Baseball All-Stars. And Sue is going to get the free pass. Runners at the corners now. Two outs. And Tanner Pinkston is going to come to the plate. Pinkston, 0 for 1 with a strikeout in the first and a walk in the fourth inning. Denevi on third. Sue on first. And first baseman Tanner Pinkston steps in. Pinkston fouls that one as it hit the ground and came off his body. Foul ball, 0-1. The pitch to Pinkston, and that's a swing and a miss. 0-2 the count now. Bottom of the fifth inning, 5-1. Campo poured it on in the top of the fifth, scoring four runs. Tanner Pinkston, whose Twitter tag is at Tanman underscore Pink. And Ladresh with a ball that hit the ground before home plate. Ball one, one and two now. Denevi on third for Doherty Valley and Sue on first. Runners at the corners, one and two the count here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Pinkston speaks the truth. He said this back on his Twitter earlier to one of his buddies, It's C. James, on February 29th. He said, if Valentine's Day is a holiday, why can't the Super Bowl be one? And that's driven, and that's going to get that's going to get down. Fair. That's a fair ball. Pinkston with a double, and that's going to score two runs. Bases, bases clearing. Bases sure. clearing double for Pinkston as Sue and Denevi come in to score, and that's huge. That one almost looked to me like it was going to be foul. It just snuck in the left field line as he drove that down the left field line. So Doherty Valley right back in this game, 5-3 to three with that RBI double, two-run double from Tanner Pinkston. Yeah, they've closed the gap now from four to two runs, and they, they, they think they've, you know, breathed a little bit of life back into themselves here with that big hit from Pinkston. Draco Roberts now, one for two in the game, single in the second, fly out. In the fourth, Pinkston in scoring position at second base, and Doherty Valley has a little two-out rally going here in the bottom of the fifth. Roberts fouls that one back as Pinkston was on the move, but he'll have to go back to second. Tanner Pinkston with a two-run double here to make it Make the score 5-3 to three here in the Division Two NCS title game. And Doherty Valley fans start making some noise. Called strike to Roberts with Ladresh working out of the stretch. One and two the count with two outs. Bottom of the fifth. Doherty Valley fans coming alive here. Cheering on their squad, the Wildcats. Ladresh to the plate. And that's wide. Two and two the count to Roberts with Pinkston on second base. Ladresh checks on Pinkston. Now comes home. Off speed pitch for a ball. Runs the count full now, three and two with two outs. And the scoreboard still urging the fans to make some noise. Why not? This is a crucial point in the game for both teams. 
with the score five to three. Ladress checks on Pinkston. The three two. That's swung on and driven to left field. But Kirazi, excuse me, is there. Right at Kirazi. Right at Didn't even really have to range one way or the other. Line drive hit and caught by Cody Kirazi to end the inning and get out of that jam there. Five to three, though. Two runs scored in the bottom of the fifth inning. We're going to take a quick break. This is the NCS Division II Championship game. And when we come back, I'm going to turn it back over to my broadcast partner, Michael Smith. Thank you. For the sixth and seventh inning. You're watching CIF North Coast TV. All right, folks, and really quick, I'll play for you a little bit of the interview from um, Doherty Valley head coach. This was on BayPreps.com. I know at bat to uh, talk about uh, that game, and did you have the feeling that uh, you guys were uh, going to break through w with a win uh, in the late innings? Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible atmosphere, an uh, incredible game, and uh, our sophomore, Ryan, who came up with a big hit, uh, we've We've done it so many times at home. That, that's the thing that put us at 13 and one at home on the year. Um, 20 and quick, 23 and four. This was talking about their win against Petaluma. We talked about a lot of walk-off wins, a lot of magic on that field. So when we, yeah, when we got the two seed, we we knew they had to go through uh, through Doherty Valley to get to the Coliseum. So we were confident in that, and um, yeah, it was it was just great. We had a huge crowd, and um, I mean, unbelievable moment. And that crowd has been trying to do their best to create a Doherty Valley-esque atmosphere here today. They have been loud when urged to get loud. And a ground ball hit over to second base. It will be an out. One swing at a bat, one out here. As that was... Kirazi, I believe. Yes, Cody Kirazi to lead things off for Campolindo. 4-3 grounder there. One away. And back to the top of the order, and Brett Stevens. Brett Stevens, who is one for three in this game. The start of this game didn't look too promising for Stevens. Two strikeouts swinging, but then his last at-bat, the third one, like they always say, third time's a charm. And he came up to the plate and almost took the ball out of the depths of Odaco Coliseum. Went to the left center area there near 367, where the high wall starts, or right center, I'm sorry. And... Uh, Got a triple, and he was that started a three straight hit parade for the Cougars that drove in a run, and then those three hits ended up making two more runs later on because those runners that were on after uh, the singles got brought in on a nice big hit by Dennis Karras, who almost left the yard to left. So yeah, Brett, two, yeah. two monster shots by Stevens and Karras. Karras able to get a three run double and thrown out at third trying to stretch it but impressive hitting from the from the Cougars in that fifth inning right and so here is Stevens left handed batter an 0-1 count and he hammers one left center field that one's got it going away and that one's going to drop no it's going to be caught what a catch made by Ben Polanski over the shoulder grab Looked like it was going to be just out of his reach, but he was running back and to his left and able to make an over-the-shoulder catch, second over-the-shoulder catch we've seen today. And that was a fantastic play by Ben Polanski, the left fielder for the Doherty Valley Wildcats. Great defensive play. As now we're starting to see shadows eke onto the field from the towering light pulls here at O.Co. Coliseum. One... Of the shadows is out there in left field where Polanski had to race to get that ball. The other is in the infield just past the pitcher's mound on the left side of the infield. And first pitch to Marvel is a ball, 1-0 the count. Marvel, the designated hitter, has showed why he's in that role today. Three straight hits, all of them singles in three at-bats. With his latter single being an RBI single. He scored with his first single. Scored the only run in the first inning. And now faces a 1-1 count after swinging and missing at strike one. Right-handed batter. 
Pitch on the way, and that one is low. Two and one now the count to James Marvel. Marvel, who will be heading to the University of Duke to continue his baseball career next fall. Their two and one offering nearly hits Marvel in the head. He had a duck out of the way of that pitch and now steps way outside the box and gives a pretty menacing stare to the pitcher. Saying, you better not do that again, big boy, or I'm charging the mound. <laughs> Three and one now the count. And Marvel's a big boy. He strikes me as the type of guy, if I got in a fight with him, I probably wouldn't win. And I don't know if the pitcher on the mound for Doherty Valley would win either. And Marvel, who was ready to just keep walking, he thought he had himself a walk there on a 3-1 count. And instead, home plate umpire says, get back in the box. Yeah, his, he calls that a strike. He's got pretty good size, 6'3", 197 pounds. Yeah, big kid. Marvel, sharply hit ground ball. But it rolls foul down the third base line. And so the count remains full. Three balls and two strikes. On deck is the second baseman, Robbie Tanerowitz. Heading to Cal University. And there's the walk. The free pass. And yeah, and, and now Marvel can walk on over to first without any interruption from the home plate umpire. So he continues to stay perfect so far. Three for three, and now a walk to his name. He's reached base safely in all four at-bats. And here's Robbie Tanerowitz. Yeah, Tanerowitz, two for three on the game, a strikeout in the first, and a single in the third and in the fifth. But really with two costly errors that have helped Doherty Valley get back in this game. You're right. You're absolutely right. Let's see if he can make up for those right here with another base hit. And Tanerowitz will be patient and watch a pitch that gets out of the zone. Actually, no, he swings and misses at that pitch. It's a strike, but the ball bounced away in the dirt from the catcher for Doherty Valley, that being Connor Fahey, and that allows James Marvel to get over to second base. Owen won the count to Tanerowitz with one out. Make that two outs. Pitch on the way is high. And that one is going to be a pass ball that gets away from Fahey. That was his fault that time. Yeah, it was. It looked like Fahey. And racing on down to third is Marvel. Fahey was so nonchalant there in, in trying to catch that ball. It looked like he was, It was. I mean, it was a little, little high, but nothing too hard. And it just kind of squirted out of his glove. And like you just said, Marvel able to... Advance to third on that drop by Fahey. And let's see what they're what they'll score that. And might this be the end of the road for Mr. Clark, who's on the mound. They're just having a conference right now. The ball hasn't been taken from him. Yeah, no one's been getting greased up down there in the pen, so you'd have to think that. Maybe the next conversation, Clark would be handing the ball to his manager. Right. Yeah, but he's, he's going to stay in here. Ian Clark, who relieved Cody Snyder. Snyder moved over to third base and Sue over to second. And so that's all it was, a little, little conference between manager and pitcher. And so we're back. And Tanerowitz takes a mighty hack. He was looking to clear the fences with that swing. He was. Mighty cut from Tanerowitz. He was trying to hit that ball really, really hard. And he missed. One and two now to count. Austin Ray is on deck. The Cougars lead five to three. Bouncing ball gets away from Fahey. And coming on in to score from third base is Marvel. And now... The Campolindo lead has now doubled. It's now 6-3 to three over the Wildcats from Doherty Valley, and they are silent, the fans. 
huge run for the Cougars there to extend the lead to three, six to three now, and Marvel able to almost walk home there on that pitch that squirted away from Fahey. Bounce, and I believe hit off his shin guard and went over to the left side. Tenerowitz can't lay off the 3-1 offering there, and so now it's a full count, three balls and two strikes with two outs. So far, Campolindo has gotten one in the first, four in the fifth, and one so far here in the sixth. Nine hits. For six runs, they've also committed three errors. Torty Valley, three runs on three hits, no errors. Hard hit ball up the middle, base hit for Robbie Tanerowitz, who stays hot in his own right. Three for four today, not as good as Marvell, who's three for three in a walk, but three for four, pretty good. Anytime you can get three hits is good. Actually, anytime you can get a hit in a game is pretty good. I was listening to Eric Burns talking on the uh, Mr. T show on KMBR, and he was saying, you know, sometimes people don't realize how hard it is to just get one hit during a baseball game. Well, that's what it, you're going to fail 70% of the time. Yeah. You know, a good a good baseball player, they're going to be hitting 300. I know in high school it's it's uh, you see averages that are that are higher than 300, but in the majors, 300 is a good average and that's one, you know, 3 for 10. Right. And so, yeah, most of, a lot of it is is failure, but when you can get that get multiple hits, Definitely having a great day. And here is Austin Ray, 0 for 1 in the game. Put down a sack bunt. And coming, trying to take off for second was Tanerowitz, but they caught him out by a mile. Yeah, a mistake there by Tanerowitz. Connor Fahey throwing him out. Sorry, Michael, but yeah, oh, a, mis a mistake there by Tanerowitz. And uh, I think if he slid head first there, he might have been able to avoid the tag, but kind of conceded the out as he went in feet first and... He was gunned down to end the inning. Yeah, and so that's how it, it's going to go down here. We are going to go into the bottom half of the sixth inning as Campolindo gets one run on one hit and one error. And they lead now 6-3 to three going into the bottom half of the inning. It's time for catch-up. If you're in the Doherty Valley Wildcats, we'll see if they can get it done. Today's game is being broadcast live on the internet on CIF Northcoast.tv. You can buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game and watch a replay on CIF Northcoast.tv. Watch today's game live and on demand all on CIF Northcoast.tv. All right, thank you. And Ben Polanski will be the leadoff batter. He'll be followed by Adam Diaz and Andrew Ramos. As far as I know of, they might make some substitutions, get some other players in. Trevor Denevi got in in the last inning. He was a senior that had yet to see the field. Seeing it for the last time in his high school baseball career. and I mean, this is a, this is a privilege to be able to get to play you know, not only in a championship game, but a championship game in a major league team's stadium. A lot of these kids from Doherty Valley and Campolindo, I'm sure go to A's games on the regular. Why not? It's only a little bit of a drive for both of those guys. Especially when you can come on those, those Wednesdays, you got the $2 A's tickets. Well, it seems like they have deals <laughs> every day. I'm looking at all these promos they got around the ballpark. Look. Bart, you get $2 A's tickets every Wednesday. Xfinity, you get Friday Family Pack, four tickets, four meals, 50 bucks. Tuesday is Chevy Free Parking Tuesdays. I mean, what day don't the A's have something going on? They're pretty much begging people to fill this park up and make it so that we're not cracking jokes on live TV about well, their attendance. <laughs> no, but that's what they need to do, though. I mean, they haven't been getting the, uh, the attendance that they need. No, they haven't. The attendance that they deserve because they've been playing some good baseball this year. They have Polanski now at the plate, considering you know all the circumstances. Sure, but back back to this back to the division. Back two to game. this <laughs> game and Polanski at the plate, <laughs> one and one the count. Polanski zero for two in the game and he swings and cracks that one foul. It'll be one and two now to Ben Polanski, the starting left fielder who made an outstanding catch to rob Brett Stevens of a hit in the top half of the sixth. And Polanski, he's trying to hit the gap. 
And he will not do so because racing over to his right in right field to make the catch was uh, Cole Ryder. And we now have a new pitcher for Camp Lindo. It's Tyler Luckhurst. I'm guessing he's the son of head coach Max Luckhurst. I think that would be a pretty good guess. Tyler Luckhurst. We don't have the numbers on him this year. But a ball that's driven well into center field will also be caught as that was Winkler who came up for Adam Diaz. Winkler. Ryan Winkler, the junior, getting an at-bat. First pitch swinging, first pitch out. And so now two quick outs for the new pitcher, Max Lucker, or uh, Tyler Luckhurst. And Ramos now at the plate. 0 for 2, strike out in the second, ground out in the fourth. Fouls that one back behind the dish. 0 and 1 the count. Thank you. Yes, Ramos is at the plate. He's 0 for 2 in this game. Struck out in the second, grounded out in the fourth. And now faces a nothing and two count very quickly. Ramos the starting shortstop. Trying to get a late game rally going for his team. And he slices that one foul and out of play. It count remains nothing and two. Looks like we got some, some action. Some in, the in, the, in the bullpen, yeah. right? Yeah, looks like number 15, Ben Polanski. And a dribbler that stays fair along the line and is cor cor corralled in for an out by Tanner or by Trent Shelton. Good heads up play there by Austin Ray. He didn't want he didn't waste any time in letting that ball determine its own fate. It could have rolled foul, but he picked it up while it was still in fair ground and threw on over to first to retire Ramos. Luckhurst able to make quick work of the Wildcats. Three up, three down there. And so it looks like Ian Clark will stay in the game. We saw Pinkston starting to get warmed up, but that inning was very quick there, so he wasn't able to, uh, to get warm, and maybe he'll, he'll be coming in later this inning if necessary for Campo. Number 17, Trent Shelton, looks like he's getting warmed up down there in the Cougars' bullpen. And so 6-3 to three now with Campo coming up and as they'll try to put some icing on the cake, Michael. Yeah. Campolindo trying to really cement this third straight championship if they can. And I was looking for... Um, a little magazine I had earlier. I can't find it. I'll have to try to find it later. No, not that one. I also had, it was an old media guide that I used in the first one for baseball and the North Coast section. I think there it is. Oh, yeah. There we go. I've got it. That way I can look up how much championships they have overall. Austin Rye leading off now, the catcher for Campo. And first pitch to Ray. Is hammered deep into left field. Could this be the first home run we've seen it all day? No, not quite. It is going to be a ball that is driven really <laughs> well, but foul. And Ben Polanski almost with a nice catch in foul territory there as he was trying to track that one down. Couldn't make the grab. Austin Ray, some of you are probably thinking, well, didn't he end the sixth inning at the plate? Well, he did, but there was a throw out there at second while he was at the plate. So being that he didn't get to finish his at-bat, he's getting to finish it now. Yeah, Tener Tenerowitz was thrown out at second as he was caught in a, caught in a pickle there. So The 0-1 misses high. Ray gets to bat again. One ball, one strike to Ray. And so I'm going to try to start adding it up. Camp Lindo won their first NCS baseball title back in 1988 as part of the Class 3A East Bay Division as Rye hammers that one into center field. It will drop for a base hit right in front of Ty Nielsen. A single for Austin Ray is first into the game. 
and it was a beauty. And that brings Cushing to the plate, the shortstop, who's one for three on the day, a single in the first, a fly out in the third, and a fielder's choice in the fifth inning. And getting back to Camp Belindo, they then won their second title in the year 2000 as a member of the Class 2A East Bay Division when they dropped down a division. And then won titles three and four in 2010 and 2011 and in the nice Division Two, And a double play turned by Doherty Valley as Josh Cushing was at the plate, hit one hard on over to An Andrew Ramos. Ramos then ran over to second, tagged the base, and then threw on over to Tanner Pinkston to finish it off. What a play to get two outs in one at bat. That'll be the 4-3 double play ground out. First ground out double play that we've seen today. That is. And Dennis Karras is now at the plate. And Karras gets into one. Skying it well into left field. Getting underneath it and calling for it is Polanski. And he makes the catch. So if the Wildcats are going to come back, it's going to be now their last chance efforts here as we go into the bottom half of the seventh, which is equivalent to the bottom of the ninth if you're watching baseball, uh, professional baseball. Let's see if the Wildcats have it in them here as we'll be right back. I'll give it over to an announcement real quick, and then we're coming back for the bottom of the seventh in which the Wildcats, down by three, trying to come back and either tie this game and take it into extras or get the win. Yeah, we got football in the fall, Michael. It's, it might seem a little bit premature to talk about the 2012-2013 school year, but in a little over two months, we'll be back on CIFNorthCoast.tv with some football action from around the section. Starting in late August, we get back to our coverage on the gridiron with multiple games weekly. Join us this fall as we kick off the football season right here on CIFNorthCoast.tv, your home for North Coast section sports, and stay tuned for the CIF North Coast TV postgame show where we, will, where we will select our player of the game as well as wrap up the action from this Division II championship game. That's coming up following the game on CIFNorthCoast.tv. I'll tell you, hunger's really starting to set in at this moment. I can't wait for this game to be over. <laughs> and then my options are limitless because then I am, I'm done for today. I could stay here and chill and watch the De La Salle game or if I really want to. I can get up and bounce and, and get some something really quality to eat here. Not saying that Odako Coliseum doesn't have any quality eats. <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm saying. You know, ballparks, they just want to charge an arm and a leg for the food that they have. And I'm just not down with that sometimes. No, but there are multiple bar ballparks who do have very good, very good food. But you're going to, like you said, you're going to pay an arm and a leg. You are. And so Connor Fahey will lead things off for Doherty Valley. He's trying to get the rally started. Ball placed right field high in the sky. Drifts into foul territory and getting underneath it is Cole Ryder. Makes the catch. And now Campo's only two outs away from winning back to back to back North Coast section baseball titles in the Division II. Yep, and the Campo fans standing up and starting to chant for their Cougars as they're two outs away from a three-peat. Nielsen now to the plate. Ty Nielsen, the center fielder. And so here is Nielsen at the plate. Back at the dish. It was, or no, Correction, it's not. It's, uh, it's Oselin. And Oselin, first pitch swinging, or actually the first pitch was a ball. Second pitch he swings at, grounds it over to Tanerowitz, who throws on over to... Shelton for out number two, and so now they're just one away. The crowd can taste it, just like I can taste whatever I'm going to eat. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm tasting something. Now all the fans? They're all on their feet, of course. There's the yes. one fan who's urging everyone to get up on their yes. feet, and so then everyone follows. That's how it goes. And what? Tanerowitz fields that ground ball, throws over to first. To Trent Shelton. A quick ground ball out. I didn't even see that. They got that so quickly. 
That's going to do it. Stole it right from beneath me. And so the Campolindo Cougars finish out what has been one of the most impressive athletic seasons I've seen from a high school in quite a while. They might win that Cal High Sports athlete pro or uh, Athletics Program of the Year award again like they did last year. They're knocking on De La Salle's door. They are knocking on De La Salle's door as they win this game 6-3, to three, which makes them the 2012 North Coast Section Division II champions. Congratulations to the Camp Alindo Cougars. And our second DFAL team to take a title home today. The second DFAL team to take home a title today. Akalanas took one home in the D3 bout. Either way, either way this game would have shaken down. It was going to be the second DFAL team to win. Is Doherty yes, Valley sir. also a member yes, of the sir. league? And it is Campolindo in those very cool-looking throwback uniforms and ode to the old White Sox and current Blue Jays with the numbers on the back. And they get it done here at a place that they are very familiar playing at. They have played here a number of years in a row. And... It's only about a 15-minute drive from Moraga, if that. And it's the Camp Alindo Cougars who win, but also congrats to Doherty Valley for pulling off some big one-run wins to even get here. Not a lot of people picking Doherty Valley to get to the championships, but they were the two-seed, and they played tough the whole season. Big ups to the men in all-white uniforms with the white hats from Dublin. And I have a feeling that this is not going to be Doherty Valley's last trip to a North Coast Section Baseball Championship neither. They might have a good program brewing, but they're going to have to take some tips from a league rival as Camp Lindo has shown how you get a program going. Congrats to Max Luckhurst and his Camp Lindo Cougars. An outstanding performance. All right, folks, get ready for the nightcap. It's going to be a good one. The Division One final for the North Coast section. As uh, we can break this game down really quick. The first inning is where Campolindo first got on the board. James Marvel got a single after a strikeout from Brett Stevens. And then he was brought in on a single from Josh Cushing three, at, three batters later to make it a one nothing game. Bottom half of the first, no score for Doherty Valley as they went three up, three down. And that trend would continue, the scoreless inning trend, as both teams went scoreless in the second, third, and... Well, second and third innings. Yes, both teams went scoreless in the second and third innings. In the fourth inning, the uh, Camp Lindo Cougars went three up, three down, but it was the Doherty Valley Wildcats that finally got a run on the board and tied this game up at one apiece as Brian Sue reached on a throwing error by Robbie Tenerowitz. He advanced all the way to third on that play. And then a couple batters later, it was Ben Polanski who reached on an error by, uh, by Robbie Tenerowitz once again, and that is what created a run to make it one to one. Then in the fifth inning, Camp Lindo had already had enough of the tie ball game. Brett Stevens led it off with a triple to right field. That was followed by a James Marvel RBI single to make it 2-1. to one. Then Tenerowitz came up, got a single of his own. And so with two runners on, Josh Cushing came to the plate. He would get an infield single, and that would make bases loaded. And then Dennis Karras with the big hit to left field in which he tried to stretch it for three. He got tagged out at third base, but it was good enough as it cleared the bases, brought in three, made it four to one in favor of Campolindo, ending things in the top half of the fifth. In the bottom half of the fifth, Campolindo would get two runs of their own. It started with the Connor Fahey single, and then Trevor Denevi reached on an error by Robbie Tenerowitz, and uh, that error would bring Fahey all the way around to third, runners on first and third, as Brian Sue would walk, and then a double from Tanner Pinkston down the left field line brought in two runs to make it 5-3 to three in favor of the Camp Lindo Cougars still. And then the Cougars added one more run in the sixth inning as uh, James Marvel walked. Robbie Tenerowitz came up with a single, and, um, and that's how it went down. And so, folks, 6-3 to three is your final score. 
And I'm going to ask you, who do you think your player of the game is? I kind of got a guess on who my guy is. I'm going to go with James Marvel. You tell me if you agree. I know Dennis Karras ultimately got the big hit that, that kind of got things going. But James Marvel put them up 2-1, I feel. And he got he went 3-for-3, three three, reached base all, safely all four times. He's my guy. Yeah, no, I agree. When you were recapping the game there, I was trying to think of my player of the game. James Marvel definitely comes to Two mind. Two stolen bases. Exactly. Like you said, got the, got the Cougars up. And another guy, you got to applaud the performance of Matt Ladrich, the pitcher, yeah. the sophomore. You know, Matt Ladrich, yeah. Yeah, Matt Ladrich. But uh, I would, let's go with Marvel. He, uh, he did it on the offensive side today and, and really helped out the Cougars in this victory. So then it's settled. Be, uh, it James is. Marvel is. is our player of the game for this North Coast Section Division II baseball championship bout between – the Campolindo Cougars and the Doherty Valley Wildcats. And like I said, it's the Campolindo Cougars who will go home champs for the third year in a row in the 2012 version of the North Coast Section Division II Baseball Championship game. They are getting their awards right now, and they are a happy bunch. I can tell you that. They will be partying hard in Moraga tonight. So, folks, thank you for tuning in. Thanks to Todd Flournoy for being our producer. Thanks to Stephen Davies for helping him out. Thanks to James Davies for being the cameraman for that game. Thanks to Alex Richmond, my color analyst. And thanks to all the fans that tuned in. And, folks, thank you for being a part of this magnificent broadcast brought to you by CIFNorthCoast.tv. I want to thank everyone listening, Gil Lemon, the commissioner of the North Coast section, for getting me in here and broadcasting these games. My night is done. You will not see me be a part of any of these broadcasts. Alex will be here to produce the last yes, game. I, will. I wish him all the best of luck. I think he was watching me in the D3 bout to see how it goes down. I have full confidence in him. He is a joy to work with. And, folks, like I said, please stick around because this D1 game, there is no lack of excitement in this one. Once again, it's another league rival matchup. You have your number one seeded De La Salle Spartans who always seem to be in the mix. They have three of the top 100 players in the nation, according to some people. And they have a team that really just knows how to get the job done. Nike's hooked them up with some black uniforms today. It's rare that you see De La Salle in black, but they are wearing the black uniforms tonight with the white numbers outlined in green. And they can do that because Nike lets them do that. Nike gives them all the special jerseys. And I even think Cal's has, uh, Cal High has some Nike jerseys of their own as they're in the all gray with the black numbers outlined in orange. They are black and orange. And they will be bringing, both teams will be bringing big crowds. It's going to be a festive atmosphere. So stick around and stay tuned. And, uh, and, and finish out the night with us here on the four game set that we have brought to you here on CIFNorthCoast.tv. All right, folks, have a great weekend. It's been a pleasure calling games and working today.